Did you know that one of the world's most famous cities, Venice, is built on nothing more than mud and water? This floating city, with no roads and no land, rose from a swamp and grew into one of the most powerful and wealthiest cities in history. How did this impossible feat happen? How could such a marvel of medieval engineering continue to thrive for centuries, despite being surrounded by water on all sides? Join us as we dive deep into the incredible story of Venice, how it defied the odds and created a thriving empire right on top of a watery grave. Venice's origins trace back over 1600 years, when the Adriatic Sea was surrounded by marshy islands. Barely able to support even the lightest of foot traffic, the area we know as Venice was a vast lagoon where two rivers, the Po and the Piave, spilled their sediment, forming hundreds of small marshy islands. These islands were far from ideal for settling. Their soft, waterlogged clay was so weak it could barely hold the weight of a human, let alone buildings and infrastructure. But despite these challenges, refugees fleeing invaders in mainland Italy arrived in the lagoon in search of safety. What they found was a hostile, uninhabitable environment, but they had little choice but to make it work. Their efforts would give rise to a city unlike any other. At first glance, it seemed impossible to build anything on these muddy islands, but the Venetians were determined. They developed a method that would change everything. Using the resources around them, they cut down trees from nearby forests, particularly from Croatia, and crafted large wooden piles. These piles were driven deep into the soft clay, sometimes as much as five meters, until they hit a more solid layer beneath. These wooden piles, packed tightly together, compressed the surrounding clay, forcing out water and creating a much stronger foundation than nature had provided. What's even more fascinating is that wood, which we typically think of as rotting when exposed to moisture, became incredibly durable when submerged in water. The lack of air in the submerged conditions preserved the piles, preventing them from decaying. Amazingly, these wooden foundations remain intact to this day, still supporting the city. On top of these piles, Venetians laid wooden planks and then covered them with large stones, particularly Istrian stone known for its durability against water. These foundations raised the city above the waterline, providing the base for what would become the Venice we recognize today. Venetians began by constructing simple wooden houses, but as the city grew, they soon realized wood wasn't the best material. Fires ravaged many early settlements, so they switched to brick construction, which was much safer and more durable. However, building heavy structures on soft ground was risky, so the Venetians had to be incredibly innovative. They designed their buildings to be no taller than three stories, keeping them as light as possible. And instead of using cement, they opted for lime mortar, a flexible material that allowed the buildings to shift and adapt as the ground beneath them moved. But the real genius lay in how they connected these scattered islands into one unified city. Early on, the only way to move from one island to another was by boat, as Venice has no roads, only canals. The canals are the lifeblood of the city, with its iconic gondolas gliding through the waterways. The Grand Canal, Venice's largest and most famous, stretches four kilometers, with 170 magnificent buildings lining its banks. However, boats alone couldn't satisfy the growing population's need for quick access across the city. In the early days, Venice had no bridges. In fact, it wasn't until 500 years after its founding that the first bridge was constructed, 
As business boomed, the need to connect the islands became clear. The first successful bridge was a pontoon structure, but it was eventually replaced by wooden and, later, stone bridges. One of the most famous is the Rialto Bridge, a massive stone structure that still stands today. Supported by over 12,000 timber piles and weighing over 10,000 tons, the Rialto Bridge is a testament to the Venetians' engineering brilliance. Spanning 29 meters across the Grand Canal, it serves not only as a passage, but also as a bustling marketplace. However, while the bridges connected the islands, Venice's foundation on water brought new challenges. With its 48 kilometers of canals constantly shifting and eroding the land, the Venetians had to come up with more solutions. They fortified the banks of the canals by draining sections and driving wooden piles deep into the ground along the edges. On top of these, they built thick brick walls and lined them with stone to make them waterproof. These walls still stand today, protecting the city's foundations from the constant flow of water. While Venice was growing in power and wealth, it faced another major issue, fresh water. Surrounded by salt water, the city had no natural sources of drinking water. In a stroke of ingenuity, the Venetians designed a rainwater collection system. In every square across the city, they dug out large basins, lined them with clay to make them waterproof, and filled them with layers of sand and stone. When rain fell, it filtered through the sand, collecting in wells located in the center of each square. Even the rooftops were equipped with gutters to direct water into the squares, ensuring that every drop of rain was put to good use. This network of over 600 wells allowed the Venetians to sustain a population of more than 170,000 people, even in the absence of rivers or springs. However, as the population grew, so did the waste problem. In the early days, Venetians would throw their waste into the canals or streets, causing significant sanitation issues. But in the 16th century, they devised a clever system to manage their waste. An underground network of tunnels was built beneath the city, collecting waste and flushing it into the canals. Twice a day, the natural tides of the lagoon would wash the waste out to sea, cleaning the canals in the process. The salt water acted as a natural disinfectant, ensuring that the city stayed relatively clean despite the lack of modern sewage systems. Despite the seemingly insurmountable challenges of building a city on water, Venice thrived. Its strategic location made it a hub for trade, allowing goods from across the world to flow through its canals. By the 7th century, Venice had become the wealthiest and most powerful city in Europe, controlling vast territories and dominating the Mediterranean. Venice's unique engineering solutions and its ability to adapt to its environment made it a masterpiece of human ingenuity. From its humble beginnings in a swamp to its rise as a global powerhouse, Venice remains one of the most fascinating cities in the world, proof that, with determination and creativity, even the most improbable places can become magnificent. Subscribe to Truth, revealed to stay intrigued and informed.